It's a bit wet. <laughs> not, even, not even the gutters can cope with this, look. Oh well. There'll be plenty of water in the spring well. Okay, you'll have to, <laughs> you'll have to excuse me for constantly filming her at the moment because she's just such a delight. Look, I've got her little lead and she sat up there waiting for me to put down her. So I'm just going to put the camera down a wee minute. So it's been raining. In fact, there's been flood, flood alerts here in Ireland. And um, this morning I managed to avoid much of that by going up to the beach, up to Strand Hill. I was collecting some more of the white milky quartz and I brought the wee one with me. And <laughs> I don't I don't think she'd ever been to the been to the ocean before. I could be wrong, but she just she was quite frightened by the crashing of the waves on the shore. And um Patsy, come here. Come here. She's inclined to pull quite a lot in the lead because she's very, very excited to get walking. She loves these little walks. Let me just turn around and show you how fresh and green everything is. And you can probably hear the water flowing in the ditch in there, in the hedgerow. <laughs> she can pull like this. <clears throat> um, yeah, so I had her down at the beach, which was lovely, and uh, of course it wasn't raining there. It was nice and dry, quite sunny. Then I came back and did a little bit of work, and then the rain started very heavy. And I decided to go into town, I had a few things to buy. And um, so I just left her at home at that point because I didn't want to leave her in the car, you know, outside the shops. But um, as soon as I came in, she was so excited, I opened the back door to let her out for a pee. Because these little dogs, they do pee quite a lot. <laughs> It's just little peas, hither and thither peas. You know, they don't kind of, you know, Jack used to do just one big long pea and that was that over and done with. But Patsy is very, um, she's very excitable. But um, anyway, so I opened the back door, led her out for her wee piddle. And I went out just to have a wee look at the water barrels, make sure things weren't too disastrous because there was a lot of overflow that you can see here in the stream and uh, I couldn't see Patsy so I started calling <laughs> I was calling her and calling her and the next thing I was, I was, I was kind of starting to get worried you know, thinking, oh, she's run off, oh gosh you know, panic, panic and I looked down and she was just there at my feet she had already gone into the cottage and she was waiting for me. You know, she's a... Look at her, Pilna. She's such a clever wee girl. And, um... She was just stood there, you know, looking up at me. And I went, Oh, Patsy, you're such a clever girl. Look at you. So she started doing the wee... The wee runnies around the cottage. She got so excited. You know, she can tell. Not just by the tone of your voice. But I think she can understand quite a lot of words. And, um, you know, she knows when you're really happy with her. I'm just going to pull her back a wee bit now because I just... Come on, Patsy. Good girl. Come on. Come on. I don't want you going on the road. Well, not on a long lead anyway. Let me just... Uh, tighten that. I hurt my hand. On Saturday, Saturday evening, hurt my left hand quite badly. 
and uh, I'm not going up there, darling. We're just going to pan up the road a wee bit so everyone can see the beautiful Budlia that's out in flower here. Um, so yesterday you know, was a very uncomfortable day. Um, uh, the, the, uh, it was like a throbbing pain, you know, and um, just set her off the lead now a wee bit, not off the lead, but on the long lead. Come on then. This way, come on. That's it. There's the sun out now. Sunshine and showers. Come on. Patsy. Come on. Come on. Good girl. She's a very nosy Parker. <laughs> I can say, anyway, at this point, that not only has she settled in extraordinarily well, but she is very happy. She's a very happy little girl, and she loves her new routine. Like, I bring her wee bed into my bedroom at night, so she knows when I'm starting to get ready for bed. And she waits by the bedroom door for me to bring the bed in. And then she hops into it. And <laughs> then she waits for me to come back from the bathroom, you know, and all the usual stuff that one does when one's getting ready for bed at night. So she's already well um, used to that, you know. Come on, Patsy, we're not going in there. It's too wet. I'm not going to go walking through the woods now with all the raindrops falling on me. Come on. Good girl. Good girl. Come on, this way, this way. Ah, oh, don't be going around. Da, da, da. Oh, I was around my back there. Sunshine's beautiful. It's amazing how the weather changes here in the west of Ireland. It's very quick. It can be stormy and rainy and dull and grey one minute and in the space of half an hour it can be the exact opposite. As you can see here, look with the lovely evening sunshine. It's about, um, what time is it now? It must be about Half six, get on for seven. Come on. Good girl. That's it. Look, the rain is actually sculpted out little rivulets here in the gravel. It's come down so hard and fast. But the scents are beautiful. I'm just noticing all the beautiful scents. Earthy and green and floral and look at that bootlay just hanging over the driveway. I cut that back quite hard. Yes, talking about cutting back, that's how I got my sprained wrist and hand. Which, I've got to say, um, yesterday evening I picked about 10 or so big comfrey leaves and I wrapped them around my wrist and hand and then put my little wrist support back on and uh, I kept them on, you know, in bed and this morning all the throbbing had gone um, my hand is still a wee bit sore, but it's not throbbing, which was, you know when you get a throbbing pain, it is excruciating. I think it's probably the worst kind of a pain you can have. And um, so all that had gone, had dissipated, and, um, you know, my hand 
Oh, all the swelling's gone down. See? I've taken off the um, little wrist support. And uh, look, I'm actually holding the lead. Now, you know, yesterday, my fingers, I could not even touch something. But the pain was so bad. So doesn't that say a lot for comfrey leaves? Which, by the way, uh, my daughter-in-law reminded me yesterday. So thanks, Michelle. They're also known as bone knit. And, uh, you know, you can deduce from that basically what it means. It's very good for, um, you know, sprains or broken bones. Um, inflammation, I think, as well. So, it could have been one of two things. It was either the comfrey or it was a miracle. <laughs> Maybe it was both. But, so I did actually um, send a message to uh, those of you who had ordered pendants. Because I thought to myself, I won't be able to drive up to Strand Hill and go foraging for more of the milky quartz. And so I sent you all um, a little message to say that I'd hoped, I hoped to be able to get those pendants ready for Friday and get them out. But the good news is, I'm going to be posting them tomorrow. She's eating grass. The cleverness of that wee girl. So, there we go. These were some of the trees I was trying to cut. And you see, as I explained to um, someone I was talking to, what I was doing, I was holding down the branch, which is a big, big branches there, as you can see. And then trying to saw through. <laughs> so I was holding it down with the left hand and then trying to saw it through with the right hand. Yes, I hear you say, it was my own fault. And I accept full responsibility. I accept total ownership of my own foolishness and the resulting pain and discomfort. But, as William Shakespeare said, all's well that ends well. So blessings to you all. You can find all my books over my website, which is listed under each video. This is my first one, A Cottage in Three Acres, all about my journey. My second book, In Search of the Goddess Rising, exploring the goddess culture in Ireland and beyond. And my third book, Walking Between Worlds, which is literally walking between this world and the other world here in Celtic Ireland. With a lovely booklet, The Bealtaine Cottage Guide to the Deep Midwinter. And some other little treasures. Just before I go, sign off on this wee video, I want to say a big thank you to Tim, Tim Riney, who sent me a beautiful little goddess figure. Thank you so much, Tim. I also want to say a big thank you to all of you who support me um, by purchasing my books, pendants and all the other goodies over on the website at bealtonacottage.com. And a massive thank you because I know it's, it's a difficult time we live in financially. I realise that. So I want to say a massive, massive thank you to every one of you who support me on Patreon. Thank you so much. I am actually going to start reading a very old book that I got, which was written by Oscar Wilde's mother, Lady Sperenza Wilde. Sperenza was her pen name, and it's all about Ireland. So I'm going to start reading that uh, in the next few days and posting it up on my Patreon site as a way of saying thank you. You will find, those of you who don't belong to Patreon, you will find 
all my books. I have read them all for you on Patreon. Blessings to you all.